from Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa. This is Anchored in Faith. And we want to go to the scripture, praise God, over in Matt through the 26th chapter and uh, start around the 45th verse. Stop there the last time. Jesus Christ rose in your life when you are a true believer. When you receive him as Lord and Savior, he rose in your life. That's something to praise God for. Something to shout about today. It's something to be excited about because of the resurrection power that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. He died and was resurrected that we can have fellowship once again with God Almighty. As we left off the last time, Jesus was talking about, Father, if your will take this cup from me, the cup of death, the cup of pain and suffering, take this cup from me. And he told his disciples to pray, stay awake and pray. But he found them sleep more than one time. We as believers, we cannot afford to fall asleep spiritually. We got to stay alert. We can't afford to go backwards or go back into the begging or beggar elements of the world and find ourselves slipping and dipping back into sin. I don't hear you. Someone else said, praise God for helping me to stay saved. Amen. We have to continue to confess that Jesus lives in me. Amen. And so many people forget that I continue to praise God and put it in the devil's face to let him know that I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire and getting ready to meet Jesus in heaven one day. How many of you are ready to meet Jesus when you leave this body? And do you know your soul and spirit is going to leave this body? And it's going to be resurrected out of this body. It's going to meet your maker. Either of you will be in heaven to be with Jesus or in hell to be with Satan. Let's move into the message. The resurrection for all. And God did not leave anyone out. He included everyone in this beautiful resurrection that happened. Although Jesus went through death and crucifixion. And people abusing his body, and he was not recognized. You couldn't, didn't know who he was. He went through all of this. And yet he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How many of you have reached some points in your life, if you haven't, don't raise your hand, that you can say, Father, forgive him. I confessed that last week. Say, Father, forgive him. Thank you for it. Let's move into the scripture, 45th. Then come at Jesus, or he to his disciples. Now remember, keep in mind that one of his disciples had left, and his eleven left. And his name was Judas Iscariot, he left, and went to be with his father, Satan. Don't forget that. Eleven disciples, Jesus saying, I'm coming to his disciples and saying unto them, sleep on now and take your rest, because you're going to need it. Behold, the hour is at hand. The time for me to be betrayed and to be put on a cross and to die and to be resurrected. The hour is at hand. And the son of man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. People that are not born again. Verse 46. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that does betray men. Because there's temptation in every one of our lives in here. There's some form of temptation that will come to try you, test you, and try to make you look like a liar. But you know what you got to do. You got to stand on the word of God. You got to stand. When all fail, all other things fail, you, you stand on the word of God. And that's power on the, in the word of God. That's power. That's authority there. And make the devil run by speaking the word of God and be serious when you do it. And that will put fire under the devil. He will run. He can't stand the true word of God. Amen. Uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter and around verse 47. Praise God. And this was around the 11th, the 11th time that Jesus, they tried to destroy Jesus or kill him. 
before his time. Let's read in verse 47. And while he yet spake, Judas, we talk about Jesus, was speaking to his disciples, his 11. One of the 12 came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. And we see in this verse where Judas come with his own little army with him, with weapons. But he come, and Jesus was not going to resist, but they come with weapons as though Jesus was trying to fight them off. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not fight them off or away from him. But what did he want to do? What did Jesus want to do? He seen us. He want to reestablish a relationship between God and man. He wants to defeat Satan, and he did through his death. And how many of you can say that you would be able to? I don't think so, because no other out of God was resurrected from the dead. Jesus was the only one first begotten from the dead. Hallelujah, can I hear you? He was the first begotten from the dead. All the other you're all out of worshiping God or in the grave, in a tomb. But Jesus was resurrected with all power of heaven and earth trusted in his hand. Jesus Christ went down into the center of the earth for three whole days and three whole nights. And he went down and to get those souls that was down there that was against their own will and he went down in the center of the earth and got them out of there and preached a message to set the captives free down into their lower compartment and he took them to the holy city with him. And how many of you know you are glad about it? <laughs> that Jesus rose from the dead. We see that Judas... And this little army came along to take Jesus. Look at verse 48. Praise God. Now he that betrayed him gave him a sign because they went by a sign back then and they still go by a sign today. Now sometimes you can look at a person of his stature or how he looks. You don't think God can deal with that person. You don't think God can work, can work through those people like that. But God can work through anybody that he will. Amen. They looked at the statue of Jesus Christ. No, he might not have been with the rest of them, but he was a Jew. He was a Jew. And they looked at that, and, and Judas was the one that gave it away when he said he kissed him. I must tell you, they call it a Judas kiss, but I can tell you myself, and I ain't saying the word of God saying this, I said this is a betrayal kiss. A kiss of deception. Don't forget that, that Satan entered into Judas. They made an agreement. It takes two to tangle. Because when you invite demons back into you, they will come back. They will look for a place to stay, a place of resident. So you have to be very careful as a Christian not to find yourself slipping back. Now, Judas was a lost disciple <laughs> wandering around off the pathway under a new leader. Parents can deceive you, but this is what Satan wants to do, always take you down, all of you in here. In any way that he can do it, he will try. He used tricks traps, snares to get you to bite the bait. The resurrection was for all. And I know some might argue with that, so be it. Go ahead on. But I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. Look at verse 48 some more. And, he, they, and he, now he that betrayed him gave him a sign saying, whosoever I kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. I want you to just get a hold to him. The one that I kiss. Moving on down. And forthwith, going forth, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, a greeting, greeted him and kissed him. Will it betray or kiss? Some kind of salutation or greeting here. 
Verse 50. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Now we see in verse 50, which is very significant, that uh, Jesus Christ still called Judas his friend. Because once you've been called to be something, you can't change that title. A lot of people want to change their titles. And what God called them to be, you got to be that person. I don't care if you're a backsliding heifer. You still going to hold that title. And you still will be held accountable for what God called you to be. I can't hear you. People don't believe that. I know it. They get quiet and they get silent, but I'm going to say it anyway. I can care less. I've come to a point in my life where for Christ I live. For Christ I die. I don't worry about people how they think about me. I don't worry about people with their opinions of me. But I know one thing. I love Christ. And I know one thing. Jesus lives in me. I serve the risen Savior. He's in me. Jesus Christ. It was by grace that I got saved. And filled the Holy Spirit. Now I'm on a path of righteousness. And I can't afford to go back. And I won't look back. Be like the woman that turned to a pillow of salt. Lot's wife. How many of you have made up your mind you ain't going back? Amen. You better testify. But don't test a lie. Moving on. Jesus did not, did not disown Judas. Even though Judas did all of this against Jesus Christ. Sold him down the tube. How many know Jesus is willing to bail you out of anything that you go through in your life? That's why he died. He knows every hurt. He knows everything that came against you in your life. He knows the, the, the dark times and your sad times. He knows all of this because he's been through this before. But he's passed into the heavens now. The great high priest been through this. Touched by all the feelings of our infirmities. Every weakness that you have, he been through it. That's why I say you can make it when you trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own way, your own way, your own understanding, your own opinions, but you trust in him with all of your heart. Praise God. Woo. I just want to praise him for his resurrection. How he resurrected me out of sin, out of hell. Out of the jaws of death. How I many of you have been through some jaws of death that came in your life? All oh, some dark times that came in your life of hurts and pains. And you should have been destroyed many times. But your God spared you by his grace. Why not praise him? Why not rejoice in his name? Why not glorify him? Praise God. Thank God for his resurrection power. Thank you. Let's move now. I can say this. And I've seen it happen before. If Satan wants to get to a leader, uh -huh. hear me loud and clear, he will try to get, move through someone that's close to you. Yeah. An inside job. He loves working from inside out. If he can want to get to a leader, he want to he start working on the inside to a person that pro proclaims to be close to that leader. I don't hear nobody. And that happens right here. Uh -huh. Judas is carrying the money. And he carried the money purse, and he was a very important part of the disciples of Jesus Christ. He was not left out. Jesus showed him love, just as much love as all the other disciples. But he got wrapped up in the wrong thing. And the greed just set into his heart. The spirit of greed, that's a spirit, people. Greed is a spirit. Because when you open up yourself to a spirit, because you're always looking to get some kind of gain, to gain something. And you find yourself leaving yourself open to be attacked by the enemy. And let me tell you, he'll try, he'll find every area to get in your life if he can. But greed slipped into Judas. He got greedy and wanted more. Now, you know, they had a fit about when the, the, the woman uh, knowing that Jesus' feet were all. With her hair and stuff rubbing on him. They said, because so they all you for more money. But 
You waste that oil on man's feet, on Jesus. But we see where greed can get you for the love of money is the rule of all evil. Not money itself, but the love. You will go to extremes to get it. You hurt folks' feelings or whatever. You hold a gun on someone, you know, and hold a knife on anything to get that money. How many of you seen robbers out there? That's why they out there. They got greed in them. They want that money. They want something. They want that gain. They ain't out there just doing it, just look good. They out there because they want a gain because greed is in them. Spirit of greed. People don't know. Spirits operate everything you deal with. There's a spirit behind things. Hallelujah. That's a spirit behind things. Amen. Whatever you see a person operating unseemly, that's a spirit behind that person. Here it goes. A person, all of a sudden, you've been, he's been nice to you. All of a sudden, he get angry. He got an angry demon on him. The spirit of anger is on that person. And you can see it all over his countenance. So don't fool yourself to trust people because... They seem nice. They talk nice. They got a nice game talk. They got a nice facial expression. But let me tell you, when there's an undercurrent spirit, though, involved, you can't see it unless you pray. Sometimes we can't see nothing unless we pray. We ain't going to see nothing unless we pray and see God. He reveals to you what kind of spirit is operating behind a person's face. It may look good on the outside. They may look good to your natural eyes. Their appearance look real good. But underneath, there's the spirit could be operating. So we got to be very careful. And we got to pray like Jesus told his disciples. Pray. Watch and pray. And they fell asleep more than one time. So moving down to the message more. And they took Jesus Christ. Verse 51, and behold, one of them which were with Jesus, one of his disciples named Peter, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priests and smote his ear off, off his ear. Now, that was works of the flesh here, anger, which hit him. But he wanted to uh, protect Jesus, but it was in the wrong way. How I many of you know it's good to have someone there that's with you? But you got to talk to him and tell him, well, you know, don't go over. <laughs> I appreciate you being beside me. But be careful because the enemy want to do something. He want to move in another way. But you got to be prayerful. As an armor bearer for a, a leader, you got to be careful. You got to be prayed up. You don't know what your leader being attacked by every day. We don't know what the leaders of the churches are being attacked by. Phone calls, everything else. People will approach them unexpected. People will ride up to your house unexpected. And you, they didn't tell you that they was coming. So you better pray. And sometimes that seemed like good, not good enough. But we need to just stay in that secret place. And stay with God because we need to be more alert than we have been. There's more evil just sifting into this country than we can imagine. So many things are happening and we got to be prayed up. So many people are being destroyed by the hands of the devil. The murder demon, spirit of murder is out, is, is out there big time and we have to pray. People are kidnapping. I've been through that message before. I'm not going there today. They're doing all kind of things, but we must stay in the secret place, the safety zone with God. How many of you going to stay in that safety zone with God? Because you can be deceived easily. Spirit deception is out there. Okay, he struck and the soldiers and the man's ear off. Look at 52, verse 52. Then said Jesus unto him, put up the sword, put up again thy sword unto this, his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. In other words, if you use something, you have to be careful. Someone else might not use the same weapon. It may come back at you. 
And you got to be careful what you put out in your natural. And you may get another reaction. Praise God. Moving on down. Verse 53. Think it that thou, think it thou that I cannot now pray to my father. This is Jesus talking here. Think it thou that I cannot pray to my father, God Almighty, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Let me expound on that just some. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the disciples are gone, I told you earlier. Now we got 11 disciples plus Jesus Christ, which equals to 12 individuals here. And a legion of angels is 6,000 angels. Think about it. If every one of the disciples and plus Jesus had been assigned 6,000 angels each that to protect them from the hands of the enemy, Multiply that time 12. You will come up with how many? 72,000 angels in one place, which I don't think Satan can match it. He don't want to match it. He don't want to come against it. This is the kind of protection that Jesus Christ said, I could do dispatch this right now, and my father would move on my request. He could have done it. But you know why he didn't do that? He wanted to save a dying world. And I wrote down something, I'm going to tell you. Satan made so many attempts to destroy Jesus. But Jesus wanted to stay, go to that cross. He had to go to that cross. To defeat Satan's plan. Because Jesus had plans to redeem. Jesus had plans of redemption for all men. Christ had to get to the cross to spoil satanic powers and, and to show them openly, to expose them, to embarrass them, to let them know, I got keys over you. <laughs> because I'm the one to cast you out of heaven. You don't have nothing. And Jesus said in some portion of scripture, says, Satan, you don't have nothing in me. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The resurrection for all. Look at verse 54. And, but how then shall the scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be? How can this scripture, scripture be fulfilled? This had to happen for Jesus to go to the cross. It had to come to pass. It had to be to redeem man, to restore fellowship back to man again because at first Adam messed the whole plan up. He had to go. And he had to be crucified. He had to die a cruel death. He had to be beaten on. He had to be slapped and spit. He had to go through all this to save a dying world on his way to hell. Woo. Jesus, I want to thank you for what you've done for me. He had to. How can this scripture be fulfilled unless I go through this? I am the walking word among you. I am Emmanuel, God with us. God was wrapped up in the flesh was wrapped up in the word of God. Can I hear you? Walking among men. Fulfilling what his father wanted in heaven. Jesus always referred back to his father. He said, my meat is to do the will of my father who sent me. For what is your will is today? Is it your will or is it God's will? How many of you are willing to say, not my will, but your will, God, be done. And sometimes we say a lot of stuff. Sometimes we pronounce stuff out of our mouth and we want to take it back, but it's too late. It's out there. But you must go back and repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus did this. He said, Father, if you will, let this cup pass from me. This is a cup I don't want to go through. There's death and I don't want to go through pain and suffering. But if it's your will, let it be done. He went through it. He submitted himself to the plan of his father. He submitted himself in the will of God to redeem man. Moving on down. Praise God. 
Verse 55. In the same hour said Jesus to the multitudes. There's more than one. There's a lot of people. There are plenty of people. Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? Jesus telling him and testifying, saying, I sat daily with you, Judas, teaching you, uh, teaching in the temple, and ye lay no hold on me. Didn't I not show you love? This is my words I'm feeling now. Didn't I not show you love and compassion as a companion walking along with me? Didn't I not show you this? While you're here with me on earth, did I not show you? Did I make a difference between you and, and the other disciples? I know you couldn't answer that one. My Jesus. And then what else? And then you lay ha no hands on me because I protected you at the time. But look at verse 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might, might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now I got a reference on that. Over in Zechariah 13, 7, about fleeing, fleeing or running, disciples getting away. In Zechariah, the 13th chapter, verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And we see that is in the Old Testament. This was foretelling what was going to take place over the new covenant, praise God, that Jesus Christ will represent the shepherd, the leader. And his disciples would represent sheep and they would scatter. They would run in different directions and it came to pass. And it happened. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, going down to, let's go down some more here. The scripture had to be fulfilled. Look at verse 57 before we close. And they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, uh, Caiaphas the high priest. While the scribes and elders were assembled, they, according to verse 57, soldiers, they were soldiers. The assembly was soldiers and officers of the Jews. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319 319- 828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.